Hi, my name is Lauren Young. I'm from Swinburne University and the title of my FAME Lab presentation is What Are You Feeding Your Brain? We know the majority of Australians are eating an unhealthy diet and we know the impact this has on our physical health is enormous. Diabetes, cardiovascular disease, obesity, just to name a few. But what about the effects on our brain? I'm sure you can all recount a time where you have felt sluggish and unable to concentrate after eating a heavy meal. As the most nutrient-hungry organ in the body, it makes sense that our brain relies on what we feed it. Now, what if I told you that the studies we have linking the relationship between diet and our brain are flawed and that they shouldn't be trusted? Well, in our short time today, I'm going to convince you exactly why that is the case. In my research, I tackled the issue of participant selection. We noticed that people who were volunteering for research were typically health conscious and they already had a pretty good diet. And if someone already eats well, it might limit our ability to see any further improvements in their health. To test this hypothesis, I designed a clinical trial with the aim of recruiting a broader range of participants, half with an optimal diet and the other half with a suboptimal diet. I wanted to know whether their diets before entering the study actually affected how they responded to my intervention. But what came next was incredibly interesting and concerning. Let me demonstrate with some items from my pantry. If we consider the Australian population, for every 100 of them, approximately this many of them would have a good diet. It's a pretty bleak scenario, but in a clinical trial setting and what happened in my study, when I interviewed potential volunteers about their diet, the ratio looks like this. Overwhelmingly, our participants had good diets. So while majority of Australians do eat poorly, they're not the ones putting their hands up for the research. Had I not set this quota, attempting to find people with a suboptimal diet, I would have missed out on testing the people who could benefit most from the intervention. So it begs the question, how can we possibly trust previous studies that didn't do this? How can we be confident in the effect of an intervention if we only ever measure a select healthy few and don't represent our general public? If you only remember two things from my talk today, I want them to be this. First, we need more studies linking the relationship between diet and our brain function. Two, the current way we're recruiting participants is biased and it's skewed towards measuring those healthy few. We need to change how we recruit our participants to better represent our general public. It is then and only then that we can truly trust our research. Thank you.